Hi everyone, you're watching the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we will talk digital twins. And for that, we have Samir Kerr from uh, Ansys, one of our top partners. Welcome to the IoT show today. Thanks, Olivier. Really excited to be here. So before we get into the topic of that integration of Ansys solution, which is called uh, Twin Builder with Azure Digital Twins, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what Ansys is about? Absolutely. So my name, as you said, is Samir Kher. I'm a senior director at ANSYS. Uh, I'm responsible for all of our digital twin um, activities. ANSYS, for those who are not familiar, is the uh, world leader in simulation software. Engineers have been using simulation software for many years now to design their products virtually. This helps them get uh, more complexity, higher performance, and quicker time to market uh, for their products. Uh, the traditional use of simulation uh, in the product design process has actually been expanding over the last few years, um, including into uh, operations and maintenance. And that's essentially where we've started partnering and working together uh, with Microsoft. And that's top the topic of our conversation today. I love that. So uh, I know we all have our own definition of that, but I'd like for you to give me your definition or ANSYS definition of what a digital twin is. Absolutely, great question. Um, I have a slide that, that shows just that. So let me switch over. Okay, thanks. So, so here's the slide that shows um, our definition of a digital twin. There's a lot of uh, different ways that digital twins are talked about. Uh, and also there's a lot of hype around digital twins, but essentially it boils down to this definition. Um, a digital twin can be defined as a connected virtual replica of a actual physical asset and sensor streams from the uh, physical asset actually drive this virtual replica. Um, and then this combination of the virtual asset, virtual replica with the sensor streams uh, really make this thing, makes this thing a digital twin. So why is this important? Um, because this combination lets us now very uh, um, clearly um, uh, track the past of, of the asset. It lets us uh, completely explain and get insights about the current behavior of the asset, the present. And probably most importantly, it lets us predict the future and also maybe intervene to make the future behavior and operation of the product even more uh, uh, optimal. Cool, Samir. I think we do have a very similar definition of digital twins. And we have that service, Azure Digital Twins, that totally integrates with ANSYS Solutions. So tell me a bit about that integration and partnership with Microsoft. Absolutely. So uh, in order for customers to really recognize value uh, from their digital twin implementations, there's really two really big pieces. The first is an IoT platform that can scale, uh, that can provide them all of the capabilities they need to manage their data. And the second piece is the analytics, the insights that they need. Uh, and that's why the partnership between ANSYS and Microsoft makes so much sense. Uh, Microsoft obviously has the world lead leading IoT and advanced analytics platform. They're able to scale with our customers' needs uh, and, and provide all of the information and uh, visualization capabilities that are needed to, to look at all this data. Uh, with ANSYS, as I mentioned, we're the world's largest provider of simulation software. Uh, we're able to build simulation-based digital twins of virtually any product. Uh, and then this combination, adding these simulation-based digital twins into the Azure IoT uh, stack, lets customers unlock these key values, things like adding virtual sensors where you can look at sensor streams for, uh, for critical quantities that, that may not be easy to monitor, like the winding inside a motor, the temperature of the winding inside a motor, for example, getting to this higher level of accuracy with physics, being able to do what ifs before applying a solution, as we'll see in our demonstration, and then also just to generate the baseline and the failure data that you need. That, that sounds fantastic. I think this is uh, something we don't talk enough, uh, you know, in general, simulating digital twins and, and assets in general to verify your solution works. Um, tell me a bit more about, uh, you know, your solution and, and uh, let's dive a bit more into the value prop of the twin builder solution that you have. Absolutely. So with, uh, with Ansys Twin Builder, we've built up a unique product uh, to help our customers really quickly build, validate, and deploy their simulation-based digital twins. We launched Ansys Twin Builder in 2018. Uh, it's been extremely successful. We have a lot of adoption uh, in industry. Uh, it brings together a lot of different capabilities that we believe customers need in order to build out these digital twins. Um, you know, I'll highlight a few here, uh, things like the multi-technology platform, so you can 
build your simulation models uh, using a variety of different sources. Uh, the fact that we can reuse all of your um, simulation artifacts, your, your existing simulation know-how, uh, and bring them to bear in the context of, of uh, operations. Um, and then I think probably the most unique thing here is that at the end of the process of building your simulation model, we've built out the ability to generate uh, what we call runtimes. And these runtimes can then be easily deployed onto the Microsoft Azure Digital Twins stack. Runtimes, you can think of them as containerized solutions that have very limited footprints, um, and yet they represent the, the full uh, simulation detail that you need. Nice. Um, our audience is mostly developers and technical fellows, right? And so they like certainly to understand a bit better how that integration with Azure Digital Twins works. So let's jump into some of these uh, architecture diagrams. Sure, Olivier. So uh, as you see uh, in this architecture, we've got at the center, we've got Azure Digital Twins. That's where everything sort of comes together. Uh, sensor streams from IoT devices come, come in via Azure IoT Hub. And then through the digital twin, uh, Azure Digital Twin infrastructure, they are sent over to the Twin Builder runtimes that I talked about in the previous slide. Um, twin Builder can then execute the runtime um, use these, using these sensor streams and then generate additional virtual sensors uh, or additional insights uh, as well as predictions that can then be um, sent back. Um, all of this information can be viewed easily inside Azure Time Series Insights, or in a more consolidated way inside uh, Power BI. We're going to see some of this in the demo that we'll show in just a few minutes. Uh, that sounds to be pretty straightforward. So let's actually look at that demo. Let's jump in it. For the demonstration, we've been working uh, pretty hard over the last few years. Uh, we've got a few initial customers that we're working with, and this application just uh, made a lot of sense. So I think we're all familiar with, uh, with gasoline blends. We, when we go to the gas station, you see those different blends, the regular or the premium blend. Um, that's, that's one of the key uh, activities that refineries do, uh, generating, creating these uh, gasoline blends to, to the spec, which are generally very heavily regulated and mandated. Uh, one of the challenges uh, uh, blending uh, refineries uh, face in this blending process uh, relate to the fact that the quality of the blend can only be determined after the process is completed. Um, and this is a challenge because if you don't achieve the right blend quality, then you might have to downgrade your blend or you may have to fix it uh, after the fact, right? Which, which is expensive. So our solution that we built up jointly uh, lets us uh, monitor the quality of the blend as the blend is happening. So uh, think of it, like I mentioned, like a superpower. You're almost able to see inside the blending process uh, like with X-ray vision, things like that, so that you kind of understand what, what's happening as it's happening. We're adding virtual sensors in this context. We are also being also able to predict uh, blend, blend quality. And then what we'll see in this demonstration is when there is an issue, like uh, a pressure drop, unexpected pressure drop in one of the supply lines, then because we are able to do what-ifs and apply solutions um, rapidly, we can actually fix that problem so that the, the actual blend is, is still uh, meeting the, the requirement, the spec. Um, and the result here for, for customers is pretty significant. The value that can be derived from the savings alone uh, represents a um, really pretty significant opportunity for, for this type of application. I really like that, Samir. Uh, that's awesome. Let's, let's look at it in real life. All right. Um, so here's Twin Builder. Um, I've pulled it up here, and you see the actual demo that we've built up. Uh, on the right, I just wanted to highlight the fact that within the Twin Builder environment, we have uh, we ship with a large set of pre-built components and, and models that you can just drag and drop to assemble uh, your, your product or your system, uh, in addition to creating uh, new models if you need them. So in this case, uh, we in, the, in this demo, we created this model of the blender with two supply lines. Uh, so two, two sources that need to be mixed uh, by this refinery. Um, uh, you see sort of the first line here, inputs include the pressure. This is information that will come in from sensors uh, on the real equipment. So you have the inlet pressure and the valve opening for each of those lines. And then simulation is going to run through the, the actual line itself, the, the tubes and the pipes, and then the, the blender or the mixer, uh, where you see the two uh, fluids coming in. Um, and then we add two virtual sensors. The first virtual sensor represents the 
uh, output flow rate uh, of this combined mixture. And the, and the second is a, uh, a liquid fraction, which indicates the uh, fidelity or the quality of, of the mixing uh, process and how well it's tracking to the target, uh, target blend requirement. Yeah, Samir, I wanted to ask you, so these, these pre-built models, this, this library of components, they, they are defined or they are defining devices, sensors, and others of a specific domain, right? In this case, it's, it's oil and gas, it's this kind of world. Um, and so the way these industrial uh, you know, actors are defining capabilities for the devices and the type of data that they care about and so on is, is something that is theirs, right? It's very specific to that domain. So is it fair to, to assume that you, uh, ANSYS, with the, the, the twin builder, are adding a layer on top that basically abstracts the complexity but allows the users of the application to stay in a familiar environment with the names they know, the types of data they know, and so forth? Absolutely, exactly. These models that, that we have here actually represent uh, typical components that you'd find in these various industries. Right? We, we, have, we have models and libraries for things like electric vehicles, aircrafts, oil and gas applications, uh, manufacturing, and, and so on. Um, and, and you can characterize them, so you can tune them with parameters based on your specific uh, component that you're using. But we, we provide this additional layer, this sort of generic set of models that you can just quickly drag and drop to build up your system. Great question. Nice. nice, thanks. So I do want to show the, uh, you know, as you build this up, you can also look at the inside of that mixer that we looked at. So this is through a technique uh, known as reduced order modeling. Uh, and what that lets us do is, is, you know, as we're validating, building up this refinery, we can see how the, how the mixer actually behaves. We can look at different uh, combinations of, of, the, of the liquid uh, two liquids mixing to see if the if the mixing will will happen well. Again, this is part of the design process, not the operation process yet. Uh, we have you know we have the ability to look inside you know through cut planes and look at different views, um, and all of this can then uh, once it's it's uploaded into the Azure Digital Twins platform actually be viewed uh, in an operator view. Uh, so you mean not just with simulated data, but with real time data come from actual devices? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So let me and, and that's transparent for the user, right? So you, you were mentioning the fact that one of the big value add of, of the, the, the solution here is that you need a lot of data to determine models. And so having parts real data, parts simulated data allows you to do that. But switching from real to simulated like that, I think it's, it's pretty fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, we think so too. Um, so at the end of the process of creating the model, uh, all, all you have to do as a, as a user is to uh, use this um, uh, menu item here that you see compile as a twin model. And what that does is it takes that uh, model that we looked at, which was just down here, um, and generates code out of it, compiles it into a really compact form, embeds the, the solvers that are needed, um, and, and creates a, a containerized version that you can just easily deploy. It, additionally, we also generate um, the DTDL, uh, digital twin definition language representation, uh, which is the interface format that uh, that the Azure Digital Twins uh, infrastructure understands? So we automatically generate that, and you just uh, you know you just can use that to to kind of auto discover. So that that textual representation shows that. Uh, let me just show you how this looks in uh, in the Azure Digital Twins um, Explorer. Um, that that the the imported Digital Twin definition language can just come in there. You can kind of see it. You can play with it and you can connect it up very easily to the different uh, sensor streams that you need to. Uh, so if I, if I get everything right in terms of flow here, as a user, I'm importing the models from whatever you know, industry specifics. I, I basically um, you know, import that into your tool. The tool itself allows me to implement that simulation environment and so on, and then you export the DTDL model, which is using Azure Digital Twins to compose your digital twins and, and this is just the Explorer, which is just the visualizer. But then you have the benefit of all the services behind Azure Digital Twins and the integration with other twins coming from other solutions and other applications. Absolutely. You couldn't have said it better. Exactly, Olivier. Love that. Okay. That's pretty impressive. So let me let me go to the next step where now these um, these this twin is, is deployed and actually executing. And, and we are, we've connected it up to, to the sensor streams, the, the real sensor streams. So what you see here is 
uh, a view and time series insights of all of the data. The first two channels that you see on the top are the actual sensor streams um, that I mentioned. They're representing pressure uh, and uh, valve opening uh, for, for the two supply lines that we talked about. And then the bottom two uh, represent the virtual sensors. Uh, the first one was the output flow rate, and the second one is actually the, the, uh, the liquid fraction that we talked about, which represents how well uh, the uh, mixing is tracking the target blend. Uh, and so this is great. You can see it in this view. Uh, but really, uh, from, a, from a consolidation point of view, from an operator view point of view, uh, Power BI uh, is, is the place where all of this can be brought together. Uh, what you see here is on the left, you've got, uh, in addition to the actual simulated uh, version of the, um, uh, uh, of the value of the mixing, you also see this target mixing fraction. So you see how well it tracks. Um, and then the bottom shows the pressure values. What you see now, uh, it, this you see that the actual simulated value, the predicted value, isn't really tracking anymore due to this unexpected pressure drop in one of the supply lines. So that's the that's the failure, uh, and the fact that you can actually track this in real time, you can actually see what's happening, uh, and you get a, a immediate feedback that okay, your um, you know your your blender isn't really working at at, at the efficiency that it should um, is tremendous. Uh, and what you can do then is, as you see here, apply a correction. In this case, opening the valve uh, up for that failure, the, the, the line that's having this issue, uh, so that the pressure is restored. And then you can see now that the, um, uh, you know, the, the mix is, is a lot better. It's tracking back against the, the, uh, the goal, the targeted mixing fraction, and, and you, you're sort of saving that, that blend. Um, on the right side, you're seeing all of the data in a post-processing sense. You can kind of look at it. You can click through different points. And those images, as you see, um, that, that I showed you earlier, will change. Uh, they'll give you a sense of how well the, the two liquids, the red and the blue liquid, are mixing to generate the output, which you know, should be greenish purple, um, so that you kind of get a sense of whether the quality of the mix is, is good or bad. It gives, it gives a very powerful tool to the operators there, because as soon as... Uh, it is flowing into the Azure Digital Twins infrastructure, then you can imagine all the benefits of not just visualization or reporting through Power BI, but also all the uh, intelligence you can add on top, you know, using machine learning algorithms behind uh, Digital Twins and applying rules that eventually will adapt automatically, react automatically to, to the situation that you just described. Yep, absolutely, Olivier. Awesome, Samir, that's, that's a very insightful demo. So let's actually try and, and, and do a little summary of what we just saw, because th there was a lot of things here. So in terms of takeaways that, that, um, that we looked at today, right, we did talk about the fact that An Ansys and Microsoft have partnered, uh, and, how, and we showed how this partnership is really going to help our customers, our joint customers, to get to uh, value quickly, to get to deeper insights, and then actually be able to also improve their operations significantly. And then we looked at uh, Ansys Twin Builder a little bit, uh, this unique product that we built out at Ansys, uh, and how, you know, among other things, we're able to automatically generate uh, the DTDL representation so that the onboarding uh, becomes really, really easy. I like, I like that a lot. And actually, a lot, the way I'm visualizing that is that DT, DTDL becomes the, uh, the interface between the world of, you know, Ansys simulation and the world of Azure uh, in general. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, especially for developers. Uh, and if people want to know more, uh, you have this link here, aka.ms slash IoT show slash Ansys Twin Builder. The thanks, Samir. It was a very insightful uh, introduction to Ansys Twin Builder and the integration with Azure Digital Twins. Uh, any Anything else you want to share with uh, our developer audience? Hey, thanks, Olivia. I really enjoyed this. Um, I did want to point out that um, we recently had this online event uh, free. Uh, it's called Ansys Simulation World. All of the content is available uh, on demand. Uh, there were lots of really great presentations from folks at Microsoft, but also a lot of our customers presented. So if you want to learn more, you know, head over to Ansys Simulation World. Take a look. You can, you can see all of, the, all of these free videos and recordings, and you'll learn more about the digital twin space. Love it. I'm sure uh, developers will be eager to we'll add the link in the description down there. Uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Samir, thanks for joining us. And um, you know, have a good day and see you soon. Bye. Bye.